All right. Ready. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mahala and this is Ala Mahala. And on my channel, I like to do furniture flips, DIY projects, and room makeovers. Today's project though is a furniture flip, if you haven't guessed already. It's this little cabinet, nightstand, end table, side table situation behind me here. And it is definitely a situation. I think it's been painted and stained multiple times. There's a lot of chipping going on. There's paint splashed over the top of it. The cabinet glass is gone. It just, there's a lot of problems. And you know what? I paid way too much for it because I paid $50 for one single thing that is potentially a nightstand. And people don't typically buy single nightstands. I'm not sure how I'm gonna go selling this. So if you wanna keep updated on how it goes selling a single nightstand or side table, pop over onto my Instagram, follow me on there and keep an eye on my stories. I'll put all of those kind of updates on there. To get this piece looking a little fresh, a little slicker, I will be adding in some return where the glass is missing. I will also probably make a couple of cosmetic changes as well. At the moment I'm just thinking getting rid of this base because it's not really going to match the style that I'm going for. I will also be doing a custom paint mix for this piece which I can't wait to share with you. I think it's going to be really pretty. That's what I'm going to do today but first off I do need to get in and do the cleaning and of course I'm going to use my trusty Dawn dish soap for this one. I'm going to get in and clean this and tackle the spider webs. They gotta go. All right, let's get into this flip. Really important to wash back any residue of your Dawn dish soap or whatever cleaning product you use after you've used it because you don't wanna have that residue on there when you start painting. So warm soapy water, then warm water to wipe it all back. I almost forgot you should always remove the hardware first. I'm gonna take this one off now and I will not be reusing this piece. For those of you who love a dirty water shot, mm -mm -mm, delicious. So I've given this piece a clean. I removed the hardware as well. Definitely know that there's quite a few repairs that will need to be done. But before I get into those repairs, I have actually decided that I'm gonna try a paint stripper. I have used a paint stripper in the past. It didn't really work according to plan. I will link that video above. The end result of that furniture was beautiful, but the furniture stripper that I used, it was the eco alternative paint stripper. It did not work for me. Perhaps on another project I will test it out again, but for today I'm going to use the Circa 1850. So I'm going to try this one today. I think that it's going to work a lot better. And I pretty much just need to slather this whole thing in paint stripper because my goodness. There is a lot going on and it's all got to go. All of these tools are what you're going to need if you want to strip your furniture piece. You'll need a paint stripper. This is the one that I'm using. Some sort of brush to brush it on. I'm going with a foam brush. I didn't have a chip brush so this is what I'm going to use. You'll need gloves and other protective gear like protective glasses and also a mask and then a container and a scraper so that when you're finished with your stripping you just scrape it off, pop it in the container and you can dispose of it correctly. over my buns. Oh no. There we go.
it looks radioactive. Fun lesson to learn, a foam brush is not enough. It will disintegrate. You need a better brush. Well, I gotta say that that was a lot of work, but the paint stripper worked, which is the main thing. So I'm really happy that I went with the Circa 1850. It works a treat. If you need a paint stripper that's actually gonna do something, please go for that one. I know that this one may not be available everywhere, but if you can get it, it does the trick. During the process of popping on the paint stripper and then obviously removing the residue, which I did with acetone, I also removed the door and I removed the shelves on the inside. And I'm gonna get to work on the body of this piece. I'm going to remove the base, then start my sand of the top and doing a scuff sand on the side. So you'll notice that I didn't actually remove the paint or stain or whatever's going on. I didn't remove that. I just left it on there because I am painting this whole thing. So I will scuff sand it to make sure that everything's all nice and smooth. But the top I want to keep with natural wood or potentially with a stain. I haven't quite decided yet. So I need to pop on my protective ear gear. Ear gear. It rhymes. So I need to pop on my protective ear gear and get my dust extractor and my sander out so that I can get this thing a moving along. It may not look like it, but it is definitely looking so much better and I'm really loving how it's going so far. I have just done my initial sanding. So originally I started with 150 grit, but then I decided that I wanted to have the legs natural. So I swapped to a 100 grit sandpaper and then I did a scuff sand on the parts I will paint, which is mostly just the sides and also the door. I do have repairs that need to be made. I will be using this Lepage wood filler here and it's just in the color natural fill in some of those holes and gouges I am going to keep a lot of the character that's already there with some of the marks I'm not going to fill everything in I'm ready to go with repairs on the body and I'm going to get to that right now I've started the repairs on the body of this piece but there is one big repair that I really need to make on the door. And that is this bit here. I don't know what happened to the other piece. It's gone. I'm going to try and fill this with some plastic wood. I don't have any Bondo. I know that that's probably a better option. I just don't have it on hand at the moment. So I'm going to try and fill it with plastic wood. It's going to take a minute to get it ready and level. But I think that that's going to be the best solution for this with what I've got on hand.
It's a new day. I spent a little bit of time sanding off those repairs that I did. So any of the wood filler that I put onto the body of the small cabinet nightstand, I sanded that all back with a 220 grit sandpaper and just made sure that it was nice and smooth and ready to go for the next step. However, I do have one more repair that I need to make and that is to this shelf. So when I took the shelf out, it came apart. So I need to glue this back together, pop in some supporting nails as well so that that is then ready to go for when I stain and you know put it all back together. I'm gonna make this repair now and then we get to move on to the fun stuff. So I've popped that shelf aside and I'm gonna leave that to dry, but while I do that, time management and all those things, the legs and the top that you can see where I've sanded down completely, I will be keeping the natural wood, but with a stain, so I will do that in time. But for now, we're going to prime. And the areas that I'm going to prime are the sides of the piece. So you can see here where I've just done a scuff sand. And then there will be some parts on the inside that I am actually going to paint. So I will be painting the sides and the back, not this base bit, but I will paint the edge. And the reason for that is because there's multiple different types of wood that have been used in this piece and they're not all in ship shape condition to be left natural wood. So let's get to taping. Oh, I need to tell you what I'm using. I'm going to use this primer. It is a Binza primer and it's in the color gray. And to apply that, I will just be rolling it on with a foam roller. Why make things more difficult for yourself when you could roll it on? The time has finally come for painting and I've actually decided that today I'm going to do a custom paint mix and I will be using all three of these colours to make my paint mix. I don't think I've got all of the signs facing the right way. Let's see if I can just wiggle, wiggle them. Nope. Okay. I'm going to be using all three of these colours here. So we have the Algonquin, Pressed Fern and Coal Black. We do want it to be an olive green kind of colour, like a deep olive green colour. I don't currently have that paint and I thought, you know what, I have all the colours that I need to make an olive green, so why would I go out and buy some more paint when I already have what I need right here? It's a great hack if you've got paints already at home, you don't want to buy more, but you might have exactly the paint colours you need to make the paint colour that you want. Try it out, let me know how it goes. So we're going to mix up some olive green paint today. Obviously the green will be my base. Then I'm throwing in a little bit of this brown shade here with just, just a, a dab of coal black. Let's get to mixing. So this is how the color turned out. It looks a little darker in person than it does on camera. And if you're wanting to make this same color, you need two parts of the fern green, one part of the Algonquin, and I put about four scoops just on a little popsicle stick of the coal black. For my custom paint mix, which I'm loving the color by the way, I'm just gonna start on the interior of this cabinet. And I'm using a synthetic brush. I picked it up from the hardware store. I've never used this, this particular brush before, but it is angled and there's a couple of little angled spots that I will need to get into. I figured that this might be the best way to go. Let's try this paint color out. First 
skirt is on. I think it's looking really nice. It's definitely a little less olive than I originally intended it to be, but we'll see what it looks like when it dries and maybe I'll just tweak it a tiny bit for coat number two. But I do love this color. So let's see what it looks like when it is all dry. So I am back, it is another day working on this flip and I think today is the day that things will really start to come together. Now I did have a look at the paint color and it's a little greener than what I was wanting. So I did make a small adjustment to the color. You can kind of see here, this is the original color that I painted. This is the color, it's also all over my fingers. This is the color that I've got it at now. So it's just slightly less green, a few more gray tones to it. It's not as olive as I want it to be, but I think that this is going to look really nice with the stain color that I've got. So the recipe for my custom paint mix is slightly different and the way that I've got it with the slightly more gray green is with it's two parts of the fern green, two parts of the Algonquin and pretty much one part of the coal black. So if you are wanting to mix up either of those two options, you've got the first recipe and then you've got the second recipe. I'll also make a note in the description below because I've probably confused you. As as much as I've confused myself. Let's get to popping on the second coat of paint and see what the difference is between the two colors. So I just wanted to show you what the difference is between this color and the new color with the first couple strokes and then we'll move on into a sweet sweet little time lapse of me painting everything. Enjoy. Oh yeah. Look at that. I suppose it's a little more sage green than olive green. I did want it to be more olivey, but this works too. Quite a difference. It is still wet, which obviously it's gonna dry a little bit differently, but I'm liking it. While I let that dry with the second coat, I'm going to move on to the frame. So you can see here that there is a lipped edge. Now this is actually just nailed in with some finishing nails. So I'm gonna try and pry this off because it will make it much easier for me to pop the return in and then add this in on top afterwards. Then prime and prep the frame for the return. We've come to the time where I need to start staining this piece. So I am going to use this gel stain here. I have never used it before, so we'll see how it all works out. Hopefully it is a good one. I did have to go over with a 150 grit sandpaper on all of the surfaces that I am staining with this because that's what the instructions say. And as I've not used it before, I figured that it was probably a good idea to just follow the instructions. So I'm gonna pop this onto all of the bare wood, including the shelves.
The time has finally come for me to pop some rattan inside this door frame. I've got my pre-soaked rattan here ready to go. It does need to be trimmed down just a wee bit. So I'm going to trim it down, pop it in, and I will be using hot glue for this. It's worked for me in the past and I'm just going to keep rolling with that. And then I will also pop in the trim, do any little touch-ups that need to be done before we reattach the door to the front of the cabinet. <sighs> I'm so excited to see how it turns out. A look at the rattan here with if I pop the door very gently. I think the rattan is a little too yellow with the stain color that I chose so I am going to do something I'm not sure if it'll work but my plan is to actually apply some of the stain to the rattan. I know it's not going to stick particularly well but I think it might just age the rattan a tiny bit and make it look a little bit more rustic like the rest of this piece does. So that's what I'm going to test out. Hopefully it's all a success and I will use exactly the same stain color that I did before and just press it on carefully. Wipe it back when I'm done and then there we go. Hopefully it works. Um, okay. Yes, I'm so happy that I did this. It looks way better, way more toned down than that yellow and the contrast isn't so extreme between the wood stain and the caning that I put in the door. It's just darkened it up in a couple of little patches and added a little bit more dimension and texture to this, which makes me very happy because it pairs much better than that really bright yellow cane color that was coming through before. So I do need to let this dry, but in the meantime, I'm going to get on a top coat onto the shelves and the shelf brackets or shelf supports as well as the body of this piece while I let this one dry. When it comes to top coats I do really love the clear tough coat by Fusion Mineral Paint combined with Country Chic Sponge. I will spray this down a little bit with my mister before I wipe on my top coat. This piece is all finished except for the hardware which I'm going to pop on in a minute but before I do and before I show you all of the before and after shots thank you so much for coming on this journey with me today don't forget to subscribe hit the bell notification like if you feel like it as well definitely helps me out if you do any of those things you can also follow me on Instagram at a la mahala um yeah i think that that's pretty much it so let's get into the reveal the before and afters Okay, there's some ghosts in my workshop. Brrr. 